Hey there, deep and wide thinker. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of how this, this random fact about a white bellbird sparked a whiteboard full of ideas and unexpected connections. We're gonna explore why following your curiosity is my go-to strategy for uncovering new ideas, the perfect place to store your fleeting thoughts, how revisiting your notes can lead to profound insights, and a bunch more. Now, what will this look like? I do actually have some practical insights for you today, but I am a storyteller at heart, so I'll be sharing the story of how all this came about, and along the journey, I'll pull out the nuggets and the insights for you, right? And I share this way not just to give you a boring list of note-taking tips, but to show you how they actually work in my life with real examples. You want to think of me as your note-taking tour guide, right? walking you through the history of this whiteboard that I'm about to show you and pulling out useful nuggets for you to use in your thinking deep and wide journey. Okay, so here's the story. I was walking through the woods and I was listening to the birds and I found myself wondering, what is the loudest bird in the world? Now, I'm going to pause here for a moment and go into the first takeaway, and that is to follow your curiosity. All right, even if it seems unrelated to your current interests or projects, like for example, how in the world is the loudest bird in the world going to relate to what I'm thinking about currently? I don't know. But you'll often find connections if you sit with the ideas long enough. And I want to challenge you and encourage you to replace your next podcast that you want to listen to, the thing that you're dying to listen to, that next episode, replace it with just pure nature. And just see where your curiosity leads you. I want to pause just for a moment here and give you a free gift for hanging out with me today. This is a short PDF guide on how to get insights from the nonfiction books that you read and that you love into your PKM system. By the end of this guide, you'll have a simple system for highlighting your books, a mindful approach for adding content to your PKM system or PKM notes app, a process for creating building blocks of knowledge for the future, and then a simple tip for making more connections between your notes. The link to the free guide is in the description below. Okay, now a quick search led me to the white bellbird. Okay, which can reach a staggering 125 decibels. That is as loud as a rock concert. Okay, let's take a look at this white bellbird. This is it right here in all his glory. And yes, that is a part of the design of this white bellbird. I thought at first in other images that it may have been a worm, but it is definitely not. It is, it is part of the bird. All right, so it got me thinking what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels? All right, so I, I wrote the thought down in the journal, in my journal, in Heptabase for that day, right? Along with a YouTube video that I found of the actual uh, bellbird singing its song and uh, an article that I found as well. Um, so this was all in the card, um, well, technically it was in the journal. So I'm going to go into journal real quick. And uh, this is the date that I wrote it down. Right now, it's called Follow the Sound. Before, it was called something different. Since I've taken the time to think about it, I've changed the title of it. But before, it was literally just White Bellbird and then a YouTube link article, right? That was it. I wrote it with bullet points and sub-bullet points when I initially wrote the idea on this day. Okay. All right, let's head back. Okay, so I want to talk about tip number two. All right, we talked about follow your curiosity. Now, you want to have a dedicated space for capturing your fleeting thoughts. And for me, this is the daily note uh, specifically in have to base they have what's called the journal but the daily note a daily note is is the driver of idea capturing for me it is the most useful net to consistently catch the fish right 
Uh, if you constantly can't remember the thoughts that you've had, or you've had, you actually have too many places you put your thoughts. Right. Either way, give the daily note a try. A dedicated space for all the little fleeting thoughts and ideas that you have, all the questions, all the meaningful moments, and all that. Uh, and like I said, Heptabase they they call it the journal which is what I was just showing you. It is a blank canvas every single day that you can start with. You can add to-dos, you can add your thoughts, and I, again, I, I love bullet points, so all of, my, all of my thoughts are in bullet points. So at the end of the week, I turned this note into a card, and I tagged it under a, a life of learning, right? And the title was White, Bellbir White Bellbirds, colon, what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels? enough for me to uh, be curious the next time that I came across it right now this leads me to tip number three along with having a dedicated space you want to have a dedicated time to review your ideas for me it's a uh, weekly on Sunday evenings I go through my journal in Heptabase and I turn the appropriate ideas into cards right um, and then I add any additional thoughts or info and I tag them all of the, the cards by the value that I have, whether it's a life of learning, a life of width. So they're all categorized and I can revisit them when I need to. And I did do a whole video on how I actually visually organize notes in Heptabase. I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out. And what's cool is once they've been turned into cards, they have a permanent place in the card library. So they all start, these ideas and these thoughts all start on the daily note as just bullet points random ideas that's how they start and you can turn them into a card with just a click uh, but once they're turned into a card it now they now live on the actual daily note still but they also live in the card library so you can see this the one I just added here on the 15th of August is now also in my card library. So they have two places that they live. One is in the actual daily note, so I have the context of when I had that idea, and it's surrounded by the other ideas that I had that day as well. And then I have it now in the context of the card library. It has its own home alongside all the other ideas that I've been thinking about. All right, now, so later I, I rediscovered the card while browsing through my card library. I just showed you my card library and what that looks like in Heptabase, right? Just a bunch of, a list of cards, or a grid of cards. Um, and this is what I wanna bring up in tip number four, is that you wanna take time to browse your notes regularly. I wish I did this more, right? There's no agenda, it's just letting ideas resonate and reconnect, and, and I, I chose the word browse intentionally because you are perusing your notes to see what speaks to you. There's not a, uh, an action or an aim. You're just browsing to see what resonate, what bubbles up and what's speaking to you in that moment that you can kind of dive in and go deeper. And it's perfect because with Heptabase, once you find something that you I want to go deeper in, you just drag it onto a whiteboard and start exploring. That's what this turned into right here. What you were looking at started with a single card, led to more connections to that card, and more connections between other cards, which I'll get into in just a second. Okay, so I rediscovered the card while browsing, and the idea this idea of white bellbird, I can't say that, white bellbirds, um, what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels? That stayed with me, it resonated, so I added it to a whiteboard um, in my workbench. My workbench, I keep uh, pinned here, and it is a collection of all the ideas that I'm currently thinking about um, or that I want to keep top of mind, right? It is my idea workbench. So it's filled with whiteboards, it's filled with sections that are grouped, things that I'm pondering, um, just different ideas and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I threw, I created a whiteboard, the white bellboards right here, white bellbirds, uh, and I started going to 
and I started exploring, right? And so the, this thought of what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels led me to explore how some ideas have their own frequencies and some are quiet and others are impossible to ignore, right? And so I added my thoughts, these thoughts that I had, in bullet points to the same card. Let's take a look. So here's the card with the title, what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels, I have the image of the bird, and then I start jotting down my ideas. Ideas have frequencies, some loud, some soft. Not every loud idea is a good idea, but we should follow the sounds. Sometimes they're far off and distant, and we may have to travel a bit through the idea wilderness, but eventually if we follow the sound, we'll discover the source. So I wrote these ideas down. And as I wrote these ideas down, I immediately thought of Carl Jung's quote, right? And the quote that I thought of was, people don't have ideas, ideas have people, right? And so I searched for the, the card, people don't have ideas, ideas have people on the sidebar, and then I dragged it over onto the whiteboard, right? And so once I dragged it over, I made the connection visually, and now inside of the card, the connection is there. Uh, these are all whiteboards right here. But in the white bellbirds whiteboard, you can see the connection to follow the sound, where do the white be bellboards in, in your life, what ideas are coming in at 125 decibels, right there. And I can see it also in this as well. White Bellbirds is the, the whiteboard, and here's the connection to people don't have ideas, ideas have people. Now, diving deeper, I explored the links between the cards, and I found another relevant quote that fit perfectly, so I connected that as well. Let's jump into tip number five. You want to look for new connections using existing connections, and they're, off, they're, they're often more abundant than you realize. So practically, this means opening up the card you just related to the source card and looking for its connection to see if there are other cards that relate well and in addition to that you want to look for other whiteboards so let's go back into people don't have ideas ideas have people if I go into the information um, right now it's all open but you can see visually here with the whiteboard icon that I have this card on three different whiteboards ingredients of a well-lived day merciless note-taking and then white bellbirds is the newest one but what i can do is i can look at the other whiteboards that it's related to and i can go into those whiteboards i can go into merciless note-taking and browse and peruse and just kind of look around to see what relates uh so i know that this this quote here don't bend don't water it down definitely relates and I wanted that to be also in the bir the bellbirds uh, whiteboard and another one that I found was find out what makes you come alive and keep collecting ideas that define and support that All right so I added those to this whiteboard for the white bellbirds and I made the connection to the source card so that when I go into the information I have uh, I have all of the connections to this card. Here's the other one. Uh, find out what makes you come alive. All right, so these came from looking at the whiteboard. And then what I did is I, I searched the word curiosity in my notes. And I, I found a card titled Be a Full-Time Noticer, which felt closely related. All right, so I added the be a full-time noticer to this whiteboard and connected it to uh, the source card of follow the sound and I thought be a full-time noticer can be like the main idea and then as a sub idea uh, the card follow the sound could be a sub idea or a sub card of that idea so I want to go ahead and make the connection uh, which is what brings me to my my final point right here is that you can search keywords in your notes and and sometimes unexpected insights will bubble up 
right? You can try different words from the current notes that you have inside the whiteboard. And then you wanna browse the results for a bit. Sometimes the notes that, that relate aren't necessarily in the top 10. With Google, we've been conditioned to just search the first page and then after that it's, it's you know, nothing else is relevant. But uh, I would encourage you to, once you start typing in, um, here I can open up here and search curiosity and I can allow myself to just search for a little bit and see what what resonates and then add that to this whiteboard and make the connections visually so this one also came up uh, by searching curiosity as well the thinking pods what are they uh, the benefits of that. This is just the different spaces that you have where you notice that your thinking, your clarity in thinking is heightened. Your ideas seem a little bit more, uh, they have more quality and, and all that. And for me, uh, it's definitely being outside, but there's different spaces and different people that you're around that will just kind of elevate your thinking. And so that's the, the idea of the thinking pod, uh, which relates nicely to uh, follow the sound. I hope you found at least one of these six tips helpful for you. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions on visual note-taking or on heptabase or if you have any thoughts and I'll see you on the next video.